Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's video concludes my little workspaces series. In today's video, I want to show you some tips and tricks and talk about some more advanced use cases. Let's dive right in. Last time, we just worked with the single workspace. So in the first video of the series, we had a single workspace and a single user just using it to preview. In the second video, I showed you how you can have multiple stages and different users responsible for these stages and set up a whole workflow. Today, let's talk about multiple workspaces. So workspaces is not only useful for one single workflow, but instead you can have multiple use cases. For example, I set up my system here to not only have the workspace from last time, but also to other workspaces. In this case, content examples and winter wonderland. Both show different use cases. The content examples workspace is a specific workspace that is only there for pages below the content examples tree. So with this, what you can do is have every section of your tree assigned to a separate workspace and have people responsible for those parts of your website. So in a corporate environment, for example, you may have the data protection officer responsible for the data protection pages and the imprint. You could have your marketing and media team responsible for the news pages or the PR team for publishing press releases and stuff like that. So each of these groups could have their own workspace restricted to the pages that they should work on. This is an easy way to have multiple groups working in the same type of three while making sure that they can't um, cross each other too much and still have all the benefits of workspaces and workflows available. Each workspace can additionally have its separate workflow. So for example, a press release might have other steps attached to it before being released, then changes to the data protection pages have. So that's one of the more advanced use cases. The second one is, in my case, the Winter Wonderland workspace. Imagine that you have a website that changes with the seasons, maybe because you're selling products related to seasonal changes, or you would just want to have your website look in a certain way or use graphics that match the season. You can have a workspace for each of the seasons and then set the workspace to be automatically published at a certain date. For example, if we take a look at the configuration of the Winter Wonderland workspace by going to the edit view, this workspace is set to auto publish at the 1st of December. So what you can do is you can already start now to change images or content related to December and have it automatically published in December. To do that, you need to have the scheduler task set up for that. Otherwise, there's nothing that will publish it. But then that works out of the box. While we are here, there are two other options I want to show you. The first is publish only cont content in published stage. With this checkbox, you can enforce the workflow. So instead of being able to publish content that is in the editing stage or still in the proofreading stage, your content needs to go to the publish stage before it can be published. This makes sure that that step is taken in any case, which is good if you want to enforce that. The second option here is also about restricting things. It's restricting publishing to the workspace owners. So, Remember on the general tab, you could set an owner for the workspace, for example, B. If we activate this checkbox, this means only I can publish content. This is good if you have workspaces or areas where you want to ensure that 
a specific group of people or a specific person publishes the content. For example, in case of marketing content, this might be related to social media publishing that needs to go out at the same time. Or um, you have your lawyer or data protection officer who's the only one who is allowed to publish changes on his pages or her pages. So these two options are pretty good. And then there is one other thing that's good to know about workspaces. So this video is really just a collection of smaller tips and tricks that you can use to make workspaces more useful for you. The other thing is, do you know the situation when your boss asks you to show you the latest changes on the website and you're not ready yet and you don't want to go live because you know after publishing he might have comments on that and then you need to change things again. Workspaces allows you to generate preview links for someone who hasn't got a Typo3 login but is still able to view the changes with that specific link in the context of the workspace. So for example, if we are in our winter wonderland here and we want to make winter changes here, customize for Santa coming. Let's just make a change that we can see. And I click preview now. So this is the preview as a logged in user. I have my slider on top. I'm logged into the back end. This link isn't usable for my boss because my boss doesn't have a login. What I can do now is I can go to the workspaces module and click generate preview links. Then I get a link with a special parameter. And this link is a link that I can send to anyone. And on clicking on it, I get redirected to a preview of the workspace Winter Wonderland. And everything is now in that context. As long as I don't click on stop preview, I can click on the pages and surf through the website in the context of this workspace preview. So even if I have multiple pages that I rebuild and have made a lot of changes, I can preview all of them with this link. So this is really useful for getting third parties to check this out. And that's it. That's my little collection of tips and the conclusion of my Workspaces series. I really hope that you will try it in your next project. I can recommend that. Have fun with it. Leave a comment if you like it. Bye bye. <laughs>